You might be forgiven for thinking that the most disturbing part of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD was the sheer suddenness of Pompeii's destruction. But while the town's destruction was unspeakably tragic, the speed at which it happened wasn't nearly the worst thing about it. Two festivals happening in the town at the same time meant the tragedy at Pompeii ended up so much worse than it should have been. According to the book Pompeii, an archaeological guide, the Pompeians were in the middle of a multi-day celebration in honor of the Emperor Augustus. Known today as the first emperor of the Roman Empire, Augustus had died 65 years earlier and had just been made a god, as well as having the month of August named after him. Pompeii's streets were filled with public celebrations, including street musicians, fortune tellers, plays, and athletic events. Many of those performers and athletes came from outside Pompeii to take part in the event, as did the visitors and tourists who came to see them. We can't know exactly how many extra people were in the town at the time of its destruction, but it is certain a lot more lives were lost than might have happened if the eruption had happened a month later. Even worse, the day before the eruption was Vulcanalia, the festival of the god Vulcan, otherwise known as the god of fire and volcanoes. It wasn't so much that the people of Pompeii didn't get a warning that Mount Vesuvius was going to erupt, because there definitely would have been smoke, small earthquakes, and loud rumblings at the very least. It was more that because of Vulcanalia, they would have interpreted these signs as good omens from the god rather than the warnings to get out of Dodge. As far as the townspeople cared, these warnings were simply signs that Vulcan was busy at his forge inside Mount Vesuvius, perfectly happy that everyone was celebrating his special day. We're in Pompeii, and it's Volcano Day. It wasn't just the timing of the festivals that screwed everyone over in Pompeii, though. It was also the weather. According to Perspecta Weather, the wind in that part of Italy during August tends to blow in a southwesterly direction. If this had been the case during the eruption, the cloud of ash and deadly gas from the volcano would have blown away from Pompeii. Sure, there still would have been the whole heat and lava thing to contend with, but that wasn't what killed most people in the city. If the ash and gas had spread in the direction the wind normally blew, far more people would have likely survived. But for some reason, that day the wind was blowing to the northwest, straight towards Pompeii. Aside from dooming the town itself, this also meant that many of the townspeople couldn't escape. Pompeii sits on a bay, and some people evidently attempted to escape by ship. But our only eyewitness account of the tragedy, by Pliny the Younger, says the wind was blowing dead inshore and stopped terrified residents, including his own uncle, from leaving that way. Their most effective escape route was blocked off because of a bizarre change in the weather. In fact, the nature of the wind that day was so bizarre that it has caused some historians to think we have the date of the eruption wrong. According to the Australian National Maritime Museum, the unexpected wind pattern could mean the eruption took place in autumn, later in the year than first thought. Considering many of the people of Rome lived around 2,000 years ago, it's easy to feel a disconnect between their lives and our own. But with Pompeii, we don't just have the skeletal remains of those who died, we can actually see in great detail the fear on their faces at the moment of their deaths. The nature of the detail in these remains makes the town's destruction feel like so much more than just history. When Pompeii was being excavated in the early 1800s, the archaeologists realized that, when they found a skeleton, it was always surrounded by a void in the compacted ash. The diggers started pouring plaster of Paris into the spaces, and what emerged were essentially casts of people during the last moments of their lives. In essence, the archaeologists could see the exact positions they took as the ash rained down. There are even animal casts, including one of a dog writhing on its back, twisted as if in great pain. We find several groups together, three people together, four people together. It seems that they, they may be helping each other. But modern technology can take this information even further. Seeker reports that in 2015, many of these casts were CAT scanned. This means we now know the victims' ages, sexes, and intimate details about their health. We can even construct accurate images of their faces, such as a four-year-old boy frozen in terror or a baby asleep on its mother's lap. Giovanni Babino, the head radiologist on the project, said, Working with these casts was extremely moving. It felt like I was dealing with real patients. Pliny the Younger provides our only eyewitness account of what happened on that day in Pompeii, and he didn't even write about it until more than two decades after the event. But his account shows that witnessing the city's destruction had a profound effect on him. Pliny was 18 and living across the bay in Mycenae when the eruption began. His uncle, Pliny the Elder, had also been a naval commander in the early Roman Empire and decided to sail to Pompeii to try and rescue people. 
Pliny and his mother were left to escape Mycenaeum on their own. Eventually, they left their house because the strength of the earthquakes made staying inside dangerous, and they had to keep shaking off ash so they wouldn't be crushed by the weight of it. Elsewhere in the town, people began to panic, and false rumors quickly spread about Mycenaeum being on fire. But, according to Pliny, it was the noise that was the worst. He wrote, You could hear the shrieks of women, the wailing of infants, and the shouting of men. Some were calling their parents, others their children or their wives, trying to recognize them by their voices. People bewailed their own fate or that of their relatives, and there were some who prayed for death in their terror of dying. Many besought the aid of the gods, but still more imagined there were no gods left, and that the universe was plunged into eternal darkness forevermore. Pliny the Elder died at Pompeii, having failed to save a single life. Historians still aren't exactly 100% sure how people in Pompeii actually died, but it's mostly accepted that, in general, they were smothered by ash and gas, crushed when buildings collapsed or hit and killed by falling debris. This is why the bodies archaeologists have found show people were largely intact when they died. But this might not have been the case for victims in other cities affected by the eruptions. According to National Geographic, in the cities of Herculaneum and Oplantis, things were all the more disturbing because they were probably hit by pyroclastic surges, catastrophic mixtures of ash, lava, and noxious gases. But the deadliest characteristics of a pyroclastic flow are heat and speed. They can move at 50 miles an hour and reach temperatures of 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. That kind of all-consuming heat can effectively flash fry a person to death. It causes a person's bodily fluids to boil instantaneously, including those inside their brain, essentially causing their head to explode. Within 10 minutes, all the soft tissue on their body would vaporize. And there's strong evidence that this happened to many of the victims in Herculaneum and Oplantis. If Egypt has taught us anything, it's that people really do not give a toss about the sanctity of the dead, with tombs in that country being ransacked almost as soon as they were sealed. The same is true in Pompeii. Despite it being the final resting place for thousands of victims, all grave robbers tend to think about is how much shiny stuff is buried with them. And the residents who fled their homes in terror did make it easy for these thieves, since many of them grabbed all their valuables to bring with them. Since Pompeii wasn't really rediscovered until the 1700s, these grave robbers have remained active up to the present day. Pompeii's official website mentions archaeologists unearthing one room and finding tunnels dug in the ash and the skeletal remains of six individuals thrown around, damage done by humans, not a volcano. A shop was also discovered in 2016 with evidence that looters had been there first, although thankfully they managed to miss a hoard of gold coins found inside. In 2017, there was actually so much tomb raiding that, for the archaeologists, it became a race to dig out new areas before they were found by crooks. Not everyone who steals digs a tunnel, though. Some just pick stuff up when they visit as tourists. Luckily, a lot of them come to regret that decision. According to The Telegraph, in recent years, authorities have been sent a hundred packages returning items pilfered as souvenirs, with many of the repentant grave robbers believing the objects have brought them bad luck. Perhaps the worst thing to happen to Pompeii since the eruption was the fact that, for a long time, it wasn't even properly taken care of. And it wasn't the archaeologists in the 1800s who screwed up, but those in charge of the site during the second half of the 20th century. In 2008, The Guardian reported that the Italian government had declared a state of emergency at Pompeii. Not because the volcano was about to erupt again, but because the historic site was in such a state of disrepair. The conditions were described as squalid, with the amazing site swarmed by souvenir hawkers, fake parking attendants, and bogus tour guides. It had few signs, even fewer security guards, and only three bathrooms. The third of the site that was still buried was even being used as an illegal trash dump. But more dire, according to Reuters, was the decades of neglect the UNESCO World Heritage Site had suffered with visitors expressing shock at the site's decay. Frescoes and stones that had survived almost 2,000 years were deteriorating at an alarming rate, with thousands of pieces lost every year. Restoration work that had started in 1978 was still nowhere near being completed. The culture minister at the time stated that to call the situation intolerable doesn't go far enough, and a year-long state of emergency was quickly declared. A special commissioner was thus appointed to try to save the site before human laziness and selfishness could destroy Pompeii all over again. To this day, the volcano that destroyed Pompeii is considered one of the most dangerous in the world. Mount Vesuvius made it pretty clear it wasn't messing around when it buried numerous towns and killed thousands of people back in 79 AD, but that eruption wasn't even the most destructive in terms of damage. That happened in 1631. 
but for some reason the area at its base is still regarded as prime real estate. Six million people currently live close to Vesuvius, and according to Volcano Discovery, three million of them are at serious risk if it ever erupts again. And the problem is that Vesuvius tends to get very angry very quickly. Unlike some volcanoes, Vesuvius doesn't let off small warning eruptions before the big one. Instead, this volcano tends to sit perfectly quietly for a long time and then suddenly let off a massive, deadly eruption. It also has a much tighter time scale for eruptions than other volcanoes, so even though it last blew in 1944, it could easily go again tomorrow. Even some super volcanoes are considered less dangerous than Vesuvius. The Italian government has multiple plans in place should another eruption occur. At a minimum, 600,000 people would need to be evacuated from the immediate risk zone on the lower slopes of the volcano. Unfortunately, it's uncertain whether these plans would actually be effective or not, and seems almost a given that not everyone will be saved. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.